Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So today we are going to talk about one simple topic that I'm going to tell you that a lot of people, they ask about what is the difference between sync API and the async APIs, right? So whenever we have to call a server, a request we are sending to the server, and then the, the request that we are sending, it could be a synchronous API, or it could be a, a synchronous call or blocking API also, we can say that, or it could be an asynchronous call. We assume that, okay, for example, let's see, uh, let me share my screen with you guys try to understand that that's why like a lot of people they get confused between sync and async apis so for example uh i'm hitting this particular request from the server so let's see this is my uh client so i'll take this one let's see this is my uh, client and let's see this is my server and i'm sending a request to the server and then i want to send another request to the server so let's see this is my server and then i'm going to send one more request to the server so I'm sending request number one, request number two, and request number three. That is what I want to do from the client side, from the browser side, or it could be a, a mobile application also, anything. So what is happening when I'm sending request to the server, once I get the output, once I get the complete response from the server for request number one, then only the second request will be executed. Once I get the complete response from the second number, request number two, then only the third request will be executed and then so on. So if you imagine that a performance of this asynchronous calls, that is what I'm saying, sync APIs or uh, synchronous calls that I'm doing it. If you hit, let's see, back to back 100 requests that you are sending, and then in that case, what will happen? In that case, it is taking a lot of time because first request will be sent and the second response is coming, then only the second and then only third and then only the fourth request will be sent like that. But in the asynchronous API, let's talk about asynchronous API also. Let's see, this is my client once again, and this is my server. In asynchronous API, I'm sending back-to-back -back requests. Let's see, request number one, then I'm sending request number two, then I'm sending request number three also over here. And then it really doesn't matter that which request is getting completed first. For example, let's see, third request is getting completed first, third is coming at the same time, second is coming at the same time, or let's see, first is also coming at the same time. So here, this async API doesn't matter that the first request is still getting processed by the time second request and third request will be processed and then the user or the client will get the output over here like that. I'll give you one graphical representation over here, then you will understand better. So you see this example here, see this diagram. I'll refresh this particular uh, diagram once again, just see that. So what is happening here? There are seven requests are available. You can see one to seven requests are there. And uh, request number three is the asynchronous API, asynchronous request that I'm sending it. So first request is getting completed, then only second request getting completed. And now see the third request, the red color request is still taking some time, but by the time fourth, fifth and sixth and seventh request also started in the background. You can see that the third request is still running, fourth started, after four, fifth started, then sixth started, then seventh started, then the third request will be completed. So out of these, let's see seven, uh, APIs or seven requests, this third one is the asynchronous API. So asynchronous API is actually what asynchronous API is not blocking the request. It will say, okay, fine, you go ahead with the fourth request. Once fourth is done, go ahead with the fifth, the sixth, and then seventh one. So in that way with the asynchronous API is not time consuming it. The performance of your application will be drastically will be improved in that case. You assume that, okay, let's see there is one e-commerce application. In e-commerce application, you have a, a request you are sending to the server. Let's say I want to generate all my orders from amazon.com or from swiggy.com or from zomato.com. And I want to see a number of, uh, uh, let's see, restaurant in that particular area. So you're sending a request and then hundreds of data, hundreds of response, I mean, uh, data or restraints are coming from the server. So if you are using the synchronous API in that way, the synchronous API will actually block the entire user experience. I cannot, uh, my application will not be responsive in that case. I cannot perform the second action until unless I get the complete response from my uh, the first request that I've already hit. Once you get the complete response, then only you can hit that, okay, fine, I want to select this particular order or select this particular order like that. But if you're talking about the asynchronous API, in asynchronous API, you are sending the request to the server that I give me all the products which are available for MacBook, or well, let's see for laptop category from amazon.com. So you are getting the complete information from, um, uh, from amazon.com server. But by the time I really want to click on some other product also, other categories also, I want to perform some other search. 
I want to call my uh, card APIs or card services in that way, I can do that. My application is always up and running and the responsive in that way, but it is not blocking any request. You can execute fourth request, fifth request, sixth and seventh request as well. You can see in the diagram over here. I'll give you one more example. Uh, see this example over here. This is the very good example for the blocking and the non-blocking API. Blocking API means I'm talking about the synchronous API. And the non-blocking API means I'm talking about async APIs. So it's not like I will never use the sync APIs. In sync API, I'll be using, especially when you are very much bothered about it. Okay, once the first request is done, then only the second request will start, then the third, and then the fourth request will start. So here you can see beginning of the first request. We are waiting for the response received from the database or something, and the end of the first request. And then again, the second request, and then waiting for the from the server, and then end of it. Like that, you have to keep waiting for another request. Once the first request is completed, then only the second request will start. But in async API, see this, you're sending a request first, second, third, and fourth. And then first is getting completed, then second is getting completed, third is getting completed like that. And then it can maintain any order. So if you see that, let's see this over here, we started from 20 seconds to 500 milliseconds, 20 seconds, milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. Within this particular period of time, only five requests we could complete with the sync APIs. But for the async APIs, you can see that, okay, we are back-to-back -back sending the request and back-to-back -back requests are getting ended. And it's not blocking the next task, what exactly the next task that you are executing it, right? So let's see, in the first request, I want to search. But in the second request, I want to perform another search. In the third request, I want to perform, let's see, the order history. In the fourth request, I really want to add some uh, product in the cart application or something like that. So I can do anything with respect to request. It's not blocking the request over here. And once the respective requests are completed, it will be ended in any random order. The order doesn't matter over here. If you see this particular diagram also in terms of uh, time consuming. So let's see, this is my synchronous API graph and asynchronous. This is number of tasks. Let's see, I have four tasks that I have to complete in the synchronous API. First task is taking around 20 seconds. You can see task number one. And then once the task number one is completed over here, then only the second task will start. This is taking around seven seconds. Then the second task is completed. Then the third task will be started. Then it is taking around 10 seconds. Then the third task is completed. Then only the fourth task will start. And that is taking around eight seconds. So if you calculate, let's see all the times over here, this is overall time taken by all these four tasks with the synchronous API. It's around 45 seconds, for example. But same thing, if you see with the Asynchronous example, I have to complete four tasks once again. Here you can see that, okay, the first task is getting completed, let's see, in 20 seconds. So we are sending request to the server and server is taking a lot of time because let's say 20 seconds. So we are not going to wait for 20 seconds to execute the second request. Immediately, let's see over here, the second request got started. It is started taking around seven seconds. So we are sending the request to the server, which is taking around seven seconds over here. Then the third request and the fourth request in between in parallel, we can execute that. So let's see the overall time taken by the asynchronous API is around 20 seconds. So here you can see that drastically that the performance of the script is, I mean, performance of your application or your script, whatever the code that you are writing with asynchronous is amazingly great over here. I'll give you a simple example, practical example also that how will you um, uh, prove it? Is it really working or not? So I'll do one thing. Let me just uh, open my Visual Studio code. I'll write some basic one async method or uh, uh, a synchronization method over here, just to read the file data. And then you will understand practically how exactly things are working over here. So let's see, this is my node module. I'm going to write one JavaScript over here in this particular test folder. I'm going to create a, a new file. Let's see, my file name is naveen.txt uh, file that I have created. In this naveen.txt file that I'm writing, at, okay, hi Naveen here. Uh, welcome to my uh, channel and I'm writing uh, let's see in the same line that uh, we are learning sync and something like this async API is called something like this let's see I have written here okay and then I want to read this particular text file so in order to read this particular text file I'm going to create let's see one more file let's see let's talk about the sync API first I'm going to create a sync dot uh, js file and I'm going to create one more file over here. Let's see, this is my um, async, you can say that. Um, I'll say async.js file. In sync.js file, now what exactly I'm going to do that? I'm going to import um, 
uh, one module. Let's see, I'm going to store inside some a constant that is FS module that I have to import. And I'm saying that I need to require uh, the FS module. So this is your uh, FS module is used to, uh, you know, read the data and write the data from the files, simple file handling. Okay. So what I'll do that uh, I'm going to use this particular FS and then see there is one method over here that is called read method. And there are two types of read method, read file method and the read file with the synchronization over here. So we are going to talk about read file with the synchronization method. I'm talking about, let's take an example of synchronization. I want to read this particular content of this particular file. <clears throat> I want to read over here. So I'll say, okay, fine. This method says that you have to give me the path of which file that you want to read. So you can see that uh, Naveen.txt is actually available in the same path. So I'll do one thing. Okay, fine. That uh, this is a file. I'll just give the file name that is Naveen dot uh, let's see txt file. And I want to read it saying that another option is that the encoding format also you have to use it. So I'll simply say, okay, fine. I want to use with the UTF. Otherwise it will start reading the buffer data over here. Okay. So let's see, this is a simple sync file sync method that I'm going to use it. And whatever the data that you are capturing it, let's say I'm storing, this is my uh, data variable. And, and then in the next line, I'm simple writing console.log. And then I'm printing the data over here. Okay. And then again, I'm writing this console.log. And uh, let's see, I want to print something over here that, hey, that by Naveen, something like this, let's see, I have written. Okay. Or let's see, yeah, let's see by Naveen. So you think about it, what will be the output? This is a sync request that we are, uh, are using or sync method that we are using. So file sync means first read this particular data, read this particular file, store in this particular data, and then print it on the console. It will not execute by Naveen until this particular task is completed or not. So here you can see, this is my uh, task number one. This is my task number two. And once the task one is completed, then only it will print by Naveen. So let's try that. Is it really working or not? So I'm going to run this particular, um, uh, run this particular program. So let's go to the terminal. So this is my terminal. And from the terminal, I'm going to execute this particular uh, file. So let me just clear the console and uh, I'll go to this particular uh, folder first. That is my uh, test folder. And I simply run with the node and the file name is uh, sync.js. See this, I'm going to run it. First, it will print whatever the content of Naveen.txt and then the by Naveen will be printed. So let's see this. Oops. So once again, I think, uh, okay, let me just clear the console once again. And uh, okay. So when I run this particular program here, you can see that the C first it's printing hi Naveen here and whatever the data is returned in this particular Naveen.txt that is getting printed. And then after that by Naveen is getting printed. So it really doesn't matter that how much amount of time that Naveen.txt uh, read this particular file will take, let's see, five seconds, 10 seconds. If it is taking around one minute also, then only after one minute by Naveen will be printed on the console. But let's see exactly same thing I'm going to do with the asynchronous method. So I'll do one thing. Let's see, this is my uh, same file module that I want to use it over here. And then I'm going to create a callback function here. So same thing, I'm simple writing, see this read method. And this read file method, which is by default is async. You can see that this is asynchronously read the entire content of a file. Simple. This is file sync and this is async file. They don't have any uh, keyword like async file. This read file itself is a asynchronous method. Then I'm going to use it and I'm saying that again, what is the file name? The file name, same file name. I'm going to write Naveen dot, uh, let's see text over here. And then again, that uh, I'm saying that is the UTF, uh, it encoding that I want to use it. And now see this, it's saying that you have to give me a callback function over here, right? So I can use a callback function or I can use a promises over here also. So let's see, I'm just going to use a callback function. I'm saying that, okay, if you have any kind of error, you can store in this particular error or whatever data that you are capturing, you can store in this particular data also like this. I'm going to use one Lambda function, the callback Lambda function over here. And then whatever the data, I want to read, I want to read in this particular data. If any error, you can use this error dot any, you know, error want to, you want to print it. So I don't want to use any error, but let's say I want to simply use this particular data and I want to print it on the console that uh, console dot log, and then I'm storing the data over here. And then once this particular task is completed, then after that, I'm going to write the same thing console dot 
uh, log here that I'm saying by Naveen. Okay. Now see this, what will happen in this case if you run this program? Because obviously when we read this Naveen.txt file, which is taking some time because we have some content in this particular Naveen.txt, it will take some time. So this task will take some time. So it is not blocking the request. It will go to the next request and console.log means by Naveen will be printed. And by the time this particular file read task is also completed. And then the text of that particular file will be printed on the console. So first it will print a by Naveen, whatever you have written here by Naveen, and then it will print the content of this particular file. So let's try that. So let me just clear the console. I'm going to use this time node async.js. I'm going to execute that. Can you see that? See this by Naveen, because it's taking some time. By the time the control will automatically come over here, it will print by Naveen and then it will print hi Naveen, welcome to my channel or whatever the content of that file is getting printed on the console here. So this is what, this is your asynchronous call. This is your asynchronous request method that I'm going to use it over here to read this particular file, right? So I hope you got it. See, I'm going to execute the sync.js once again. It means one by one sync means first task and then only the second task. First task is completed, then you execute the second task. So see, I'm going to use node sync.js. So by Naveen will be printed after some time. First, it will print this particular content of the file and then it will print by Naveen. Right? So that is the basic difference between sync and async.js. I hope it's clear with this particular example. So don't get confused. There are multiple tools are available in the market, especially with the JavaScript, because if you talk about a C language or Java or C sharp, they are by default asynchronous APIs. But especially with the JavaScript frameworks, whenever you are using it, let's see with the uh, Cypress, if you're using it or WebDriver IO that you're using it, that's why you must have seen that method, async method over here. It means Whenever you have to, let's say, fill this particular form and you really not bother about that, what will be the next task will be performed or third task will be performed. If you see in the Cypress also, one by one, it's not executing one by one. It's actually randomly picking anything and then executing the task over here. But if you are really bothered about that, okay, no, I really want to take care about the synchronous APIs. First, first name has to be entered, then the second name, then the third name like that. Let's see. In that way, I have to use a sync APIs. Especially asynchronous APIs will drastically improve the performance of your application, performance of the script also, especially with the dynamic application, let's say for e-commerce application or booking or fintech or anywhere where majorly that user is clicking on multiple items at the same time. And then uh, uh, one task is taking some time, but it's not blocking the other items or other requests. So that's why like your application, your website is always responsive in that way. So that's why we have to use asynchronous API which is like very, very important to implement that. For a static application, fine, we can use a sync, but for dynamic application, we have to use the async API. So this is, this, is a, this is just a small chapter to cover that. I hope it's clear. Let me know in case if you have any issues with respect to sync and async API. I thought of covering this topic because a lot of people are asking about, they're always confused what is happening with sync and async APIs or synchronous or asynchronous APIs or a blocking and non-blocking APIs. So that's all for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.